this video, we're going to discuss the main reason why there were people who supported and opposed the Rizal House Bill No. 5561 that was led by Jacobo Gonzalez and are called as Senate Bill No. 438 beforehand which was led by Senator Claro M. Recto before it became the official law as Republic Act 1425. But before we get dive into it, let us first know the brief introduction to the biography of Rizal and his acts on why others insisted to make Filipinos read his creations. In addition, to learn what the Rizal Law is all about for us to understand its purpose and intentions on why it was made and also what is the reason that led others to start debating on about its implementation. Lastly, we will start to answer these guide questions such as what was the major argument raised by Senator Francisco Rodrigo against the passage of the Rizal Bill? What was the major argument raised by Senators Jose P. Laurel and Claro M. Recto in support the passage of the Rizal Bill? And are there points of convergence between the supporters and opposers of the Rizal Bill based on the statements? These following guide questions will enable us to truly grasp the meaning and purpose behind the Rizal Law. Who was Jose Rizal? Based on the website of thebiography.com on June 19, 1861, Jose Protasio Rizal Mercado y Alonso Rialonda was born in Calamba in the Philippines Laguna province. A brilliant student who became proficient in multiple languages, Jose Rizal studied in medicine in Manila. In 1882, he traveled to Spain to complete his medical degree. Moreover, Jose Rizal became part of the propaganda movement connecting with other Filipinos who wanted reform. He also wrote his first novel, Nolimi Tangare, meaning Touch Me Not or The Social Cancer, a work that detailed the dark aspects of Spain's colonial rule in the Philippines, with particular focus on the role of Catholic friars. The book was banned in the Philippines, though copies were smuggled in. Because of this novel, Rizal's return to the Philippines in 1887 was cut short when he was targeted by police. Rizal returned to Europe and continued to write, releasing his fellow novel El Filibusterismo, The Reign of Greed, in 1891. He also published article in La Soladirdad, a paper aligned with the propaganda movement. The reforms Rizal advocated for did not include independence. He called for equal treatment of Filipinos, limiting the power of Spanish PRs and representation for the Philippines in the Spanish courts. While living in Europe, Jose Rizal wrote about discrimination that accompanied Spain colonial rule of his country. He returned to the Philippines in 1892 but was excused due to his desire for reform. Although he supported peaceful change, Rizal was convicted of sedition and executed on December 30, 1896, at age 35. Now that we have known who Jose Rizal is, let's move on and talk about the Rizal Law, what it is in particular, its purpose and intention so that we can prepare to know what made others to start arguments and criticize each other. According to the website of slideshare.net, Information provided by Edmundo Dantes, Republic Act No. 1425, known as the Rizal Law. Its purpose is to mandate all educational institutions in the Philippines to offer courses about the Serizal. The full name of the law is an act to include in the curricula of all public and private school, colleges, and universities courses on the life, works, and writing of the Rizal. Particularly, his novels, Nolimitangeri and El Filobisturismo, authorizing the printing and distribution thereof, and for other purposes. The measure was strongly opposed by the Roman Catholic Church in the Philippines due to the anti-clerical themes in Nolimitangeri and El Filobisturismo. Senator Claro M. Recto was the main proponent of the Rizal Bill. He sought to sponsor the bill at Congress. However, this was met stiff opposition from the Catholic Church. During the 1955 Senate election, the Church charged Recto with being a communist and an anti-Catholic. 
after Recto's election, the Church continued to oppose the bill, mandating the reading of Rizal's novels, Noli Metangere and El Falibusterismo, claiming it would violate the freedom of conscience and religion. On May 12, 1956, a compromise inserted by Committee on Education, Chairman Laurel, that accommodated the objections of the Catholic Church was approved unanimously. The bill specified that only college students would have the option of reading an expurgated version of lyrically contested reading material, such as Noli Metangere and El Falubis Turismo. The bill was enacted on June 12, 1956, Black Day. Based from what we have discovered about the Rizal Law, the events that it underwent before it was approved, we now realize that it was considered as an important factor that all Filipinos should know because of its benefits that it can give. For instance, we may become conscious as people that will lead us to know what indeed is the true meaning behind national dignity, personal pride, and patriotism. With that in mind, let's now answer the first guide question. What was the major argument raised by Senator Francisco Rodrigo against the passage of the Rizal Bill? Answer: The Noli Metangare and El Polonisterismo, or better known of the Rizal Bill, was famous as a one of the most controversial bills passed in the Philippines. Under normal circumstances, when new laws are proposed, it prompts a debate between the upper house and the lower house of the Senate in the House of Representatives before it could be officially approved as a law. The major argument raised by Senator Rodrigo was the book of result, especially Nore Metangere and El Polvisterismo were writing to directly attack and ridicule the Catholic Church. He stated that the violence the canon law of 1933, he also argues that the book are clearly anti-Catholic. The canon law is the ordinance and regulation made by the ecclesiastical authorities. Its function is to develop the maintain a reasonable institution for the members of the church. What was the major argument raised by Senator Jose P. Laurel and Claro M. Recto in support of the passage of the Rizal Bill? Senator Jose P. Laurel stated that all Filipinos must read the two novels of Rizal in order to know what our identity is. This let the Filipinos see our strengths and defects. Also, this allows us to be conscious as people or citizens of the Philippines to learn, know and prepare ourselves for painful sacrifices that has helped led to the freedom that we have now in the present, which was led by self-reliance, self-respect, courage and leadership. Thus, we should know that we are equal amongst the people that do strike our persons. For Senator Claro M. Recto, Rizal did not mean to teach how religion must be practiced. Instead, he focused on awakening the Filipino minds about their current situation during the time of the Spanish colonization. The novels of Rizal show the history of the Filipinos under the oppression of the Spaniards. Through his novel, he made us aware of our national dignity, personal pride, and patriotism. The novel informs us citizens of the Philippines should not be unjustly abused and disagreed by foreign invaders in our own country, that we have our right for freedom and choose the way we live. Are there points of convergence between the supporters and the opposers of the Rizal Bill based on the statements? The three senators definitely have the same concern for our country. Senator Laurel, from my understanding, aims to let the citizens of the Philippines know their identity as Filipinos, while Senator Recto refers to letting us know our history during the time of the Spanish colonization, national dignity, personal pride, and patriotism. Lastly, Senator Rodrigo points out that our love for our country as Filipinos and our faith should not have any conflict when reading this book for we are one citizens of the same country. Based from the presented information with regards to Serizal, his life, works, and the origin of the Rizal law, as well as the arguments of people before on why they were in the side of opposition and proposition, 
the purpose as well as the intention of the Rizal law and why it must be implemented, we hope that you have learned from them.